In 2014, President Yori Museveni, together with his regional counterparts, embarked on a regional project to construct a standard gauge railway. Although Kenya and Tanzania have made progress in the construction of their section of the standard gauge railway network, Uganda is yet to start on the project. What I must assure you, come August, you will see the construction of the standard gauge railway taking place in these countries. However, plans to kickstart the project are being drained by exorbitant demands for compensation. NTV has established that the yet-to-be-named investor has built on the earmarked piece of land in Namamve and is now demanding 34 billion shillings compensation. And we had already valued the people. The rich people have come about the poor ones. After buying them, they have constructed big factories, big buildings. They think if we come, we have to pay them higher. I was surprised there is a given land towards like three acres towards Namamve. According to the surveys, the people are staying on that land. We had calculated to pay them not less than around 800 million. But of recent, when I was visiting a given rich man, I have not met him to talk to him to see what is in his mind. He has constructed, now he's claiming for 34 billions. You can imagine such a Ugandans we have. So Ugandans are not wise as they may say such a people. They just want to fail our country. However, the minister says government has devised plan B to deal with the problem since there are several other investors in the Mukono area also demanding compensation before they can leave their land to make way for the new railway network. But I must say I'm laughing at those ones. We are also wise. We are considering for such a scenarios where we are to divert by bypass them because we may use less money to realign or, or de redesign the right of way for the standard gauge railway. But we don't pay those sat sat something billions. We are still in this country. We have to buy hospital, uh, drugs. We have constructed roads in Bunyoro, in Karamoja, and everywhere. Earlier, the government of Uganda was seeking financing for the project from the Exim Bank of China before it secured funding from Sanai Chattery Bank in conjunction with the tax company, which was awarded a contract. But we have the Yapi Mackens. They are talking the standard chartered bank, which will provide funds. Then also we shall use our own funds from the taxpayers' money. What this means is that borrowing funds for the standard gauge railway will automatically increase the country's debt burden. Uganda's debt burden stands at 80 trillion Uganda shillings. According to Biamukama, the company seeking to construct a standard gauge railway was single-sourced by President Museveni. Seeing on the experience, his excellence the president had received and how things were delaying, it is direct procurement. And once the president directs something, it becomes a drill and then. But also according to our due diligence we are doing, and so far taking what they have done, there are many people that approached him, but what this company has done in other countries, it is good and their pricing are favorable. So we got a direct procurement. Earlier, government had planned to spend 3 trillion shillings for the Maraba Kampala section, but this cost is expected to be higher. The cost, indeed the cost is too high. The money we are using to construct the standard gauge railway, uh, that is, for example, from Kampala to Malaba, if that money is put on tarmacking the roads, it would cover 80% of the, plan, the planned roads for tarmacking we have in this country. But for any developing country, for any country to grow, the business must be improved. So we have instituted a team, we think the report will be out to, on the 5th of next month, with the current prices of commodities in this country. How much will it cost us? Because now we cannot base on the other one. Once Uganda completes her section of the standard gauge railway network, the project is expected to boost trade in the region. If you can imagine, uh, one container of cargo can carry 12 fiso trucks. 12 fiso trucks. And the fiso truck carries about 12 tons. So if we use this Kampala Marawa to ferry cargo in Uganda and to uh, export cargo, it will be at the reduced cost. Meanwhile, rehabilitation of the traditional meter gauge railway is ongoing. Jingo Francis, NTV.